We are here on the Old Mulsee, on board the Frediciana Alexandrina Navis, an Oberstein type ship. As part of the EU-funded project Living Danube Limes, we plan to build a highly authentic replica of a late antique Lusuria type ship. But we're not going to do it with modern equipment and electricity. We want to do it using the same methods we believe the Romans used to build such ships. So, we're going to start right from the very beginning, by having our blacksmith make the Roman tools for us. The nails will also be handmade. Everything that we make and produce here can of course only be an approximation and an attempt at a reconstruction. We will use illustrations from museums and books to copy the skills that the blacksmith from the period needed to make the tools. The Living Danube Limes project is expected to provide answers to research questions in three key areas. The first concerns the ship itself, our reconstructed Lusoria. The second concerns the replica of the tools we need to build the ship. And the third is the use of these tools in shipbuilding. Here we have an iron nail, 15.5 centimeters in length, made by hand, that is roughly the average size of those nails that were found in the remains of the ship from Mainz. We are expecting to be able to make an extremely exciting comparison here a comparison between our Lusoria, weighing roughly six tons with 4,000 iron nails, and the much lighter Fridericiana Alexandrina Navis with a weight of approximately 2.2 tons. The iron nails are very soft and have very little carbon content. That has the huge advantage that when the nails are driven through the planks, the projecting ends can be bent over, thus locking the nails for an extremely strong connection between the wood and the nails. Here, we have to do some drilling before we can hammer in the nails. If we look at the tip here, we see that it is like a small spoon that is used to bore a hole in the wood with a drilling rotary motion. Here, we have an adze from the first century AD. It is used mainly to smooth the wood. The sharp tip, the sharp blade, is used for working wood, for smoothing it. What we also see very nicely here is the rivet, where a piece of carbon-enriched iron was inserted. That is something rather like steel. This means that here we have a hard edge that was especially inserted on the otherwise relatively soft iron of this adze. From a scientific perspective, it is interesting to recreate the individual construction processes with the Roman material. This is important for us as we can learn how long such processes take, from the felling of the oak trees to the splitting of the oaks so we can cut out the planks, plane them and then mount them on the frames. These are all processes from which we have no descriptions, since they were self-evident to craftsmen in the Roman period. We have to try to recreate them all. These are all very interesting aspects for understanding Roman achievements. If, for example, a source says the emperor so-and-so in the 4th century ordered his soldiers to build 100 lusori over the winter so he can speedily eliminate an eternal rival and they manage to do that. Suppose then that the entire venture is successful and the emperor is able to defeat his enemy on the battlefield simply because he can travel 1000 km down the Danube in 11 days and surprise his enemy. If we can then reconstruct one Lasoria in two years using the tools available to Roman craftsmen, then we can arrive at a proper assessment of the Romans' organizational achievements. In forging, we are using totally different materials today. Back then, the Romans used iron. Today, it's mainly steel. Here, we have trade tools, no weapons. In the reconstruction of the tools, we followed the Roman approach. We worked into the iron piece with a higher carbon content, into the area of the front of the chisel or the arts that was used for working. For example, this arts here, this is a woodworking tool that has a lengthwise grommet on it, i.e. transverse to the shaft hole if you look at the tool. Then you have to wonder how they fitted it. It was purely by forge welding and with a variety of forging techniques. Questions like this will keep us occupied for a while. But then, that is what makes it so exciting. If we could understand everything straight away, we wouldn't be here. 
and then there would be no such thing as experimental archaeology.